Hey guys, how's it going? And happy Friday. I hope all of you are doing good. And for me, and I know many of you, this isn't just any Friday. This is Good Friday, the day that about 2,000, 24 years ago, Jesus, in a place called Calvary, died and hung on a cross so that me and you might be saved. And this is a very special day. And it sounds sad at first, but it has a happy ending. We're going to celebrate Easter here in a couple days, which is the day that he rose from the dead. And if you look at the topic of this stream tonight, and the topic of most of these streams and all of this, when it comes to the Second Amendment, there is a lot of doom and gloom. And there's a lot of people who betray your natural, God-given right to keep and bear arms both locally, on the state level, and especially in Washington, D.C. But I believe this life is short, and I believe that through Jesus, God's only begotten son who died on a cross, he could have saved himself, of course, obviously. He performed miracles. He fed people who were hungry. He made a blind man see. He brought Lazarus back from the dead, but... He didn't want to save himself. He wanted to save you. And in my opinion, in my faith, through Jesus, you have a chance to spend an eternity in happiness. And this world's tough. The Bible says that life is short and full of problems, and it's nothing but a vapor that appeareth and then vanisheth away. But I believe while we're here, we're supposed to fight the good fight. We're supposed to be armed. All good people should be armed because, look, we always have been and we currently definitely are in a culture war. And this is a battle of good versus evil. And evil prevails when good men do nothing. So I want you all to be encouraged on this holy day today for so many Christians out there, including myself. And be encouraged of what your true reward is. But while we're here, we need to fight like hell to make sure that the United States never, ever, ever becomes a communist country and they're trying like crazy right now. And here's the part that's really, really hard. It's a hard pill to swallow. The fact that you're paying for the government to take your guns. Yeah. Not just you. I'm paying for it as well, but I want to talk a little bit more about this nationwide red flag center. I did a video earlier this week, and I don't think YouTube wanted people to really know about this topic too much. But it's a very, very important topic because red flag laws are either in your state right now or they're coming to a state near you or your state itself. And I'm going to go over some of that. And I also want us to think about a way to go forward and how certainly the Democrats and the current former vice president, right? Jeez, can you believe that? Can you believe you're actually living in a country? <laughs> Supposed to be the greatest country in the world where we have a current former vice president. He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know what's going on. It reminds me of when he was running for office. Can you believe that? He was up on the stage. He was in front of a crowd with about six people. Remember they put those X's in there and put circles around it. And they said, you have to social distance because of the whatever that was going around. And they, they put these six X's. They were only able to fill up four of them. And then they grabbed a couple people from the news, the, the fake news, and put them on the X's. Some of you guys might remember that. That was his biggest rally he had. Now, keep in mind, this current former vice president is the most popular. And I would also note, and this is a NewsGuard certified source, YouTube, from Time Magazine, the most popular and the most fortified of all time. And he got up there and he said, where am I? What's going on? And he said, welcome. Hello, Vermont. And they said, sir, you're in New Hampshire. And he said, oh, really? Then he called some of his guests on the stage. And he had his wife and daughter come up. Do you guys remember this? He got up there after he gave good foreign policy, like Shubin and Abedash at a pressure and Vata Calf Care. And he got up there and he said, ladies and gentlemen, this is my wife. And this is my daughter. <laughs> oh, shoot. They switched on me. This is my wife, and this is my daughter. I mean, you literally can't even make this stuff up. 
but it happened. And the most popular and fortified current former vice president of all time is currently the commander in chief, currently occupying the White House. And that position holds a lot of power. A lot of power that you fund. And he's putting the full force of the federal government and the boot of the federal government on your neck like we've never seen before. Now, here's the thing. It would be simple if we just said, oh, well, the Democrats that do all of this, let's just go after the Democrats. And they are the problem. When you get to D.C., they're a problem 100% of the time. And I'll speak for my home state. All of the Democrats in Lansing in the House and Senate have voted for every gun control bill, no matter what. That's a big task to hold those people accountable. But unfortunately, it just ain't that simple. We also have Republicans. I know in my home state, Michigan, we had Republicans vote for gun control, including the Michigan House Minority Leader. That's tough. All the way up through to the United States Senate and the former Republican president. Actually, most of the former Republican presidents in recent years. So we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about what's actually going on here and how crazy it is. We're going to be talking about the military industrial complex before this is over, the educational industrial complex. Yeah, Keep in mind those public funded universities. We'll get into all that in just a little bit. But before we do, I want to thank all of you guys just for being here tonight, hanging out. Happy Good Friday to all of you. Happy Easter to all of you that I'm not going to see over on Locals tomorrow night. We'll talk about Easter a little bit over there, but good to be here with all of you. And I'd like to thank all of you for the many ways you help support the channel. Those of you who are channel members on YouTube, who support on Patreon, as well as those of you who leave generous super chats, as well as over on Locals, which is a different site, censorship free. I'll be streaming over there live tomorrow night, and you guys are definitely going to want to join that stream because there we actually touch guns while we're live, and we do all kinds of cool stuff that... We just can't do here on YouTube, but we are on YouTube right now, and I'm glad to be here. Also, let's get into a caliber debate before this starts tonight. 9 millimeter or 10 millimeter? Now, here I have some RPM ammo. This is Rockville Precision Munitions. They're located in Middle Tennessee, and if you get their ammo, you get a nice Bible verse. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for battle, my fingers for war. And that's Psalm 144, 1. So just let me know down in the chat as the stream goes on. 10 millimeter. This is their 10 millimeter hollow point. And this is full house 10 millimeter. Not 40, short and weak, like many of the box stars offer. For more info on this, check out my locals and another site that I'm going to tell you guys about in about 30 seconds here. Because this is pretty cool. And this is something I'm actually super excited about. So I'm going to share my screen. And the link for this is down there in the description. This is Myriad Social. They're a newer site. So maybe you guys haven't heard of them before. But I think you guys are really going to like this concept. I have a profile over there. I have timelines. I'm going to show you guys that in just a second. But I really think this is a site that a lot of people in my community here are really going to like. So this is an uncensorable, decentralized social network. So that's good already because everything's like super centralized and censored like crazy. We have to like talk in codes on here, but it's funny. You guys like it when I talk in codes. So they have a myriad of opinions free from censorship and surveillance. It's built on a federated and crypto technologies. So this uses the blockchain, if you're familiar. Myriad enables users to host their own social network without centralized control. You can just join. You can just create an account there, or as you get into it further, you can actually like deploy your own Myriad server like from home. We'll get into that more in the upcoming weeks, but it's this simple, guys. You can just go on there without logging in and join it, but you can also log in without actually creating a login, which is really cool. So if you just click join, I'm going to send you guys a link right there in the description and also in the chat where you can go check out my profile, the 2AEDU profile. And then you can just sign in with your email address if you want. And it'll just send you a magic link to your email that you click on. It authenticates you. So you're not actually storing a username or password. That email address is only used to authenticate. You're not getting added to any mailing list whatsoever. So that's pretty cool. 
Now, some of you guys are into crypto and know all about that, and you have a crypto wallet. There's a couple wallets that you can use, and you can sign in with your crypto wallet. So it's completely decentralized, okay? You can log in there anonymously. You can log in there as yourself via your email. There's a bunch of different options there. And here's the deal. I was talking to the people who created this site, and actually, like, once you post there, they can't even delete the stuff that you're posting. So that's pretty cool. When you talk about censorship free, where like the people that actually run the site, like the CEO themselves actually can't go in there and delete your stuff. I'm going to show you guys this real quick too, because I've just been posting some stuff on here and there's going to be an exclusive video that you guys have not seen on YouTube. And I also brought up the whole nine millimeter versus 10 millimeter debate. If anybody's looking for nine millimeter, you guys are definitely going to want to go check out my myriad deals timeline. So let me pull this up real quick here. I'm just going to show this. This is the first time I've shared this with you. So I kind of want to go through just a little bit of a brief overview of what it is. And this is a place for patriots, for gun people. So here I am. I'm logged into my myriad. I just used my email address. You can see 2AEDU up there in the right corner. So the people that I follow on here, my friends, if you will, there's a way that you can either post your own unique content, like raw content. You're going to see I've literally done that just today and over the last few days. Or people can import stuff in, like different Twitter feeds, Reddit feeds. So people that I'm following, it's actually a cool thing because I wouldn't know to search for this, but I can see in the feed things that I posted things that my friends on here are posting and it just brings up cool news and stuff that I might not know about because there's people all over the world on here. So you can use it that way to import things in from different Twitter feeds and stuff that you like Reddit, other sites, or you can import in YouTube videos. And the cool thing is, is like once this tweet or whatever media you're bringing in is imported, it's actually going to stay here on the myriad servers. They're not outsourcing their servers to Google. So, like, literally, they've got everything where it can't be censored and your stuff can't be taken down. Now, over here, when you go to my profile, you'll see my timelines. And I have an events timeline, which those of you in Michigan definitely might want to check out. Here's the 2A days. You can see here, I'm going to be speaking at this event. This is in Fowlerville, Michigan. Let me go back here. Oops, I, hit, I clicked back too many times. Sorry, guys. And I'm also going to be speaking in the Traverse City area. So I have the other event there. So any of you in Grand Traverse County, make sure you check out that. Out that and all the details are here on my Myriad events timeline. Here's what you guys are going to like, too. Here's a shooting video for my very first shots with a PSA dagger. This is the new PSA micro dagger. <laughs> The new micro dagger. So if you guys want to see that, my literal very first shots. I had not edited it into a um, full video yet. You guys will just see the first shots. That's right there. And then we're just going to show you this real quick. When you guys get over to Myriad, just click more. And yeah, if you're in a 9 mil, definitely going to want to check that out. So it's a new social site where you guys can go over there, import stuff create stuff and definitely make sure that you're following my feed and my timelines because you're going to see cool stuff that you're not going to see here on YouTube, no matter what, because YouTube sucks and hates many things to do with the second amendment. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So national center for red flag. Have you guys heard about this? I know some of you might've seen my videos, but, this is crazy, and I want to do a little bit of a deep dive tonight, talking about what this means, how it's going to affect you, who caused this to happen, because there's some bad guys on both sides of the aisle here for sure, and what we can do about this, because this is literally nuts. So just a little less than a week ago, there was a press release. This is from the Department of Justice for immediate release, Office of Public Affairs, right? Justice Department launches the National Extreme Risk Protection Order Resource Center. These are red flag laws. And this is all going to come out of the 
Bipartisan Safer Communities Act of 2022. Let me know in the chat, because I do read all of the chat over the weekend when I'm done with these streams. Who was following this channel in 2022? Who remember me talking about this? Two years ago. Seems like yesterday in a way. But it almost seems like 100 years ago because they tried to destroy the Second Amendment more in the last two years, four years especially, than they have in the last 100 years, which is literally insane. Oh, I see Denny Wilson just um, made a friend request over here on Myriad. I will definitely accept that when I get over there. And let the people know in the chat, Denny, this is nothing you guys have to sign up for. This is like as thin and bare bones as it can over on Myriad, where you can just go in with that magic link with your crypto wallet. I use the Polkadot wallet. Some of you guys know what that is. Some of you don't. But just with an email address, that's all you need, and it's pretty cool. I'll be working more and more over there, and we'll have some fun together. And I like supporting people who are like-minded, who are trying to get rid of censorship throughout the United States and the world. And that's what I really like about the people over at Myriad that I've met. Okay, the Justice Department. Oh, boy, I just said the Justice Department. Somebody just said in the chat, you mean the Department of Injustice? Yeah, the Department of Injustice launched the National Extreme Risk Protection Order, ERPO, Resource Center, the center, which will provide training and technical assistance to law enforcement officials, prosecutors, attorneys, judges, clinicians, victim service and social service providers, community organizers, and behavioral health professionals responsible for implementing laws designed to keep guns out of the hands of people who pose a threat to themselves or others. Now, look what I just read here. That's pretty heavy weight. We're talking about every law enforcement throughout the whole country. Wow. Even officer friendly? Jeez, I hope he doesn't say, just following orders, have a family to feed. What do you guys think about that? I know some cops and sheriffs and sheriff's deputies that have said, I won't do it no matter what. And I think some of them are telling the truth, and I really hope they are. But what about the other ones? I don't know. It makes me think of that person that was out there surfing. Remember that? There was some kind of disease going around, some kind of whatever in 2020. I can't remember exactly what they called it. Some people even called it the Kung Flu. Do you remember that? And there was a person out there surfing by themselves. And a whole bunch of cops showed up on the beach. To flag the person in, they were about a quarter mile away, right? Remember, they said social distance. The person was about a quarter mile of the way, and they called them in from the beach. And they arrested them and hauled them off and brought them within the six-foot magical social distance. I hope those same cops that were arresting the surfer for not wearing a mask. He was out there surfing, wasn't wearing a mask. I bet you they would have tried to arrest all the sharks that weren't wearing one either. I hope those aren't the same cops that are going to have to do the red flag. Remember the barber in Michigan? He was cutting hair. I remember that. Arrested. Huh. Shut his business down. Do you remember Angela Regas? Now she's Michigan State Representative Angela Regas. She's a friend of mine, and I've talked about her on this channel before. She's one of the good ones in Lansing. I remember when she was cutting hair on the front steps of the Capitol, her and many others, and they got arrested over it and threatened with all kinds of stuff, threatened to ruin their lives, and they had to fight just to get it back. I hope those aren't the good cops that are going to be enforcing the red flag laws. Let me know if there's any police in this chat. What you're going to do. I mean, you don't have to. This is a public forum, obviously, but let me know what you're going to do. I know Sheriff Mike Murphy in Michigan has said he won't enforce them at all. Sheriff Darleaf has said he won't enforce them at all. My friend Rick Nieper, it's been a while, but he's been my guest on this live stream. He's a policeman, and he said he won't. He won't enforce. So that's good. There's a couple I know that aren't going to. I'd like to think all cops are on our side, wouldn't you? 
but I'm not sure because of them arresting the surfer. The way I watched them rough up grandmothers. They were out in public trying to grocery shop for not wearing masks. They're like, but I have emphysema. I can't breathe with a mask. Remember that? I have a friend named Catherine Henry who's legally deaf, especially with her one ear. Shout out to Lori DeVries. I see her in the chat. She reads lips. Like, you wouldn't even know she's deaf, right, Lori? You guys know Catherine Henry. She's a good friend of the channel. I've been a guest on her channel. So make sure you check her out on YouTube. It's called Restore Freedom with Catherine Henry. She's been on this channel. You wouldn't even know she's deaf most of the time because she reads lips so well. She can hardly communicate with people because everybody was muzzled and it's hard to read lips if you're, again, legally deaf. She can hear, but she has a physical disability and it was hard for her to even talk. She got arrested for standing outside of the designated area where you're legally allowed to, in other words. She was beyond the line, so she was in the safe zone. You'd think she got arrested with her little girl there trying to pass out a petition, a restore freedom petition. I remember all of that. And what's this have to do with the Second Amendment? I think what I'm talking about has everything to do with the Second Amendment because what I'm talking about has everything to do with a tyrannical government. And this current tyrannical government in the United States is coming for your guns like they never, ever have before. And they're willing to put the full force of the federal government that you pay for. See? Life short. And you're overworked and taxed to no end. And then you die. But they need to make sure they get every penny out of you to fund this. A lot of you are having a hard time right now paying your bills. What's happening, QD? Nice to see you, man. QD knows what I'm talking about. We're on the same page. He's halfway across the country, but look, it doesn't matter where you're at right now. You're dealing with all the different <laughs> strong arm of the law that you pay for. And they're sicking the law enforcement officials. Every last one of them is who they're trying to. I hope there's a cop somewhere that's going to come out and say, not me, 2A EDU. Guys, these people are all against you. These are huge, huge, powerful people. I have your back. I hope you guys have mine and have each other's because these are very scary and interesting times. Prosecuting attorneys, judges, clinicians, these are your doctors. Don't even get me started on the healthcare and pharmaceutical industrial complex. <laughs> judges. Victim service and social service providers, community organizers. Do you mean the same community organizers who held the mostly peaceful protests? Remember that? Mostly peaceful protests. The guy was up there from CNN. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'd probably be getting more views than CNN if it wasn't for just the way big tech is. And they don't like us talking about this. So make sure you guys don't forget to give this a thumbs up and Share with all your friends because they don't like it when we talk about this. They expect all of us to be completely dumb. And most of we the people are dumb, but I know you're not dumb. <laughs> Community organizers. The guy from CNN's out there. It's a blaze. It's an inferno. Everything's blowing up. Do you remember that right behind him? He's like, oh. They're just one a Molotov cocktail. And he says, this is a mostly peaceful protest. And they said it was, therefore it was. Didn't matter what you saw. Shut up, you're dumb. You didn't see what you thought you said. They said, put your mask back on. Put your mask back on and you'll be okay, they said. Meanwhile, they're burning it down to the ground. A young man, a guy I actually consider a hero because he could have died and he could have went to prison the rest of his life, named Kyle Rittenhouse, tried to save a small town that he grew up in, in Wisconsin. I met Kyle this last summer. I actually spoke for him in a rally and opened up for him. And They wanted to tell you it was bad to exercise your right to keep in bare arms, to keep your city from burning down to keep these community organizers, as they call themselves, right? 
these mostly peaceful protesters from completely and utterly destroying everything that people have worked their whole lives for. Well, now they're calling on them again. The behavioral health professionals. Just got a friend request from Yellow Dog over on Myriad. Cool, man. I will friend all of you guys when we get over there and we'll be hanging out over on another site where we can talk about different things. And we will. Especially if you need nine mil right now, go over there. Like, I'm not even joking at all. And if you want to see me shooting that dagger as well. I'm going to continue through this. <laughs> the launch of the National Extreme Risk Protection Order Resource Center will provide our partners across the country with valuable resources. There you go. I told you guys we're paying for this. To keep firearms out of the hands of individuals who pose a threat to themselves or others. You know, the Michigan red flag law, make sure you guys read all of yours because 21 states have them, as well as Michigan. You could either be intentionally or unintentionally a threat to yourself or others with Michigan's red flag law. Think about that. Unintentionally. I might accidentally stub my toe while I'm carrying a gun. Ooh, you better be careful. Or maybe you should just be so scared you should get rid of all your guns right now. Does anybody think about that when they read this stuff? I'm pretty sure. Maybe, possibly. Yeah, I'll give it a definitely, maybe. That might be their goal for all of this. Just make you too scared. It's too much stress. What would happen if I accidentally posed a risk to myself, even unintentionally? Just think about that. That's in the Michigan red flag law. <laughs> It's not fun to read these laws, but it's not fun to find out what's in them when you don't read them either. Said Attorney General Merrick B. Garland. There's a quote from the Attorney General. The establishment of the center is the latest example of the Justice Department's work to use every tool provided by the landmark, get ready for this, Bipartisan Safer Communities Act of 2022 to protect communities from gun violence. Okay, a couple big things there. He said bipartisan. So since we have a two-party system, it's called bipartisan when both parties in Washington, D.C. reach across the aisle and they give each other that little handshake. I'm sure they're also doing handshakes with all these different other industrial complexes who fund all their tyranny behind the scenes. Because I think there was like $13 billion total that's going to be paid out from this Bipartisan Safer Communities Act with $750 million being put into advertising, enforcing. And you're going to see as we go through this tonight, basically bribing your state, if it doesn't have one yet, to get a red flag law. Shout out to my good friends of, let me think of a good freedom-loving state, Texas in the chat. I don't think you guys have a red flag law, law right now, do you? Well, I mentioned Texas for a reason, because actually on the list of bribe money, Texas is the highest bribed state in this union, meaning if Texas goes ahead and gets one that complies with all this legislation, passed by Republicans and Democrats both, many Republicans, and we'll call them out by name in a little bit, because we always need to call out everybody who is against our natural right to keep and bear arms, but Texas was number one on the list, and they're willing to give the most money to Texas. Can you believe that? Wow. Many, many other states. They're bribing the great state of Kentucky. They're bribing the great state of South Carolina. But hold on a minute to AEDU. I live in the Gunshine State, Florida. Shout out to all the Floridians out there. You guys are awesome. You guys already have a red flag law. One that's been abused like crazy, actually. It's true. ERPO laws, which are bottled off domestic violence protection orders, create a civil process allowing law enforcement, family members in most states, and medical professionals or other groups in some states to petition a court to temporarily prohibit someone at risk of harming themselves or others from purchasing and possessing firearms for the duration of the order. Now, this would include an ex-wife, ex-husband. Think about that. How could that go wrong? Imagine the ex-wife getting scorned. 
and wanting you to suffer beyond belief. Ex-girlfriend? Oh, I guess every single ex just left on totally amicable terms and everything's perfect, right? No, that's not usually how it goes, actually. Because I know a lot of people who have had terrible, brutal breakups. Well, that person would have standing to flag you. You went on a date with them 50 years ago. That person still has standing to flag you. You didn't have to have sexual relations with them. You didn't have to have any of that. Just literally, if you went out on one date, that would be enough in many states, including Michigan, for them to have standing to flag you the rest of your life. Many other people that you've had a relationship with or currently do, like an old roommate, maybe someone slept on your couch for a couple weeks and you kicked them out because they were a bum. Geez, imagine them coming back with scorn. Eh, they have standing to red flag you as well. Someone you have a child in common with. <laughs> the list is too long, and I'm not going to go through all of it, but it almost doesn't matter because a health care provider or any police officer can also red flag you. Well, now they've taken, and now they're dumping tons of money, tons of your hard-earned tax dollars, into trying to get them more trained on this to try to get it where they can execute these red flag orders better. Well, here's what the emergency order is. This is called take the guns first, then do process. That's actually what Trump said back in 2019 when he was in front of a bunch of people in Congress. He said, I like take them quick, take the guns first, then do process. And that's what most of these red flag laws or all of them that I know of are modeled after. It's called you're just minding your own business because you haven't done anything wrong. But maybe your ex-girlfriend from years ago or your ex-wife decides to call up Johnny Law and go up to the courthouse and say, hey, now in Michigan, they could literally say, I think he could unintentionally harm himself or others with a firearm. Unintentionally? Sounds like a good reason for me, ma'am. So then they have an ex parte hearing, it's called. Ex parte means you're not a party to this hearing. This happens behind your back. Now, this hearing's extremely rushed. Michigan law, I'm just citing Michigan law, but it's very similar for almost all of the 21 states that have them. And the rest of the states might be soon to follow because they're getting bribed huge amounts of money. They have to have this hearing within 24 hours of you getting flagged. You don't know there's a hearing, though, ex parte. So the one person's there with their side of the story, right? And they just have to convince a judge and it's a much lower standard than beyond a reasonable doubt like it is in a criminal case. See, this is civil. And at first you guys are like, whoa, that's a good thing. This is civil. No, no, no. It's actually designed to like totally screw you that this is a civil process. Because under a civil process, they can use a lower burden of proof. And the burden of proof is much lower to execute a right flag order against you than if it was an actual criminal case. The other problem is they don't have to afford you, at least according to them, and they're not, they don't have to afford you due process of law, which is prescribed very specifically in the Bill of Rights. So there's a secret hearing that happens without you there. You're not there with your attorney to put forth exculpatory evidence to prove your innocence or to even give your side of the story or to be like, Your Honor, she's not. I'm not the problem. She is. No, you're not there to say that. So first they have this expedited emergency hearing in the middle of the day, middle of the night, middle of somewhere, but it doesn't matter because you're not there. And then you get a knock on the door. Now you might think it's a criminal. So you might come to your door with a gun. If you do that, well, we actually had somebody in Maryland a couple years ago that got gunned down instantly with the police, by the police, when he answered the door with a gun in his hand. Because see, he didn't have a criminal record. He didn't have outstanding warrants. He thought, well, I'm a law-abiding citizen. So when he, when his door was getting battering rammed down, he thought to himself, well, this must be burglars. It must be criminals, right? And there were criminals at the door, just not the type he was expecting. These were criminals wearing special types of costumes that came up and said, we under the authority of whatever, because they certainly aren't getting any authority from the Constitution, because the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And it says, shall not be infringed, right? And that's what they all take their oath to, but they show up under the color of law. Under the color of law. And 
take them quick. Take the guns first. So hopefully you don't answer your door with a gun, I guess. Now, if there's other types of criminals that haven't been considered sanctioned by the state, so if they're non-state sanctioned criminals at the door and you don't show up with a gun, now you're dead and you're going to get robbed by your friendly gangbanger, who almost does seem friendlier than the government in many instances nowadays. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Think about that just for two seconds. It's a pretty deep thought. Don't think about it too long. Just for two seconds, and wow, that'll open your eyes up. So your government-sanctioned criminals come to the door and say, well, here we are. We're wearing this outfit, and we have a badge, and we have an order from a judge via the Department of Injustice, and they batter your door in. If you're armed, look out, because they all have the same word. Any police force I know, the second they see it, they just yell, gun, gun, gun. And as soon as they say that, just brrr, just flash blanks. It, it's just it's just a massacre, and it doesn't end up good at all. And this has literally actually happened before, and I hope that doesn't happen again. But you have to worry about that stuff. So you come to the door, and let's just say you get past the first step. Your dog's still good, and I, and I hope it is if this ever happens to any of you. And they say, we're here for your guns. And you'll have to hand over every last bit of them. More like you'll be sitting on the couch or on the floor somewhere hogtied while they're going through and mostly peacefully ransacking the crap out of your house. Take all your guns. And you're sitting to yourself thinking, but what the heck's going on? I haven't done anything wrong. Little did you know. <laughs> Little did you know. Your ex, good old Susie Rottencrotch, she had called in and said, I think that he could be a threat to himself. And I think it might even be unintentionally. And the judge believes her. Let's just say he does in this case. You then don't hear your side of the story. They're just there. Now, I did a video with Michigan Representative Bob Bazad, who's a longtime sheriff. He's been a county commissioner and a current sitting state representative. And he said it could get dicey real quick. Because if the cop says, comes up and walks up and puts his, puts his hand in your arm and says, sir, we need you to come here. So we can take your guns and you just go, no, stop resisting. Now they could escalate the force on you. Now you've got a resisting charge. See, it started off civil in a good way for them, meaning you don't get a court-appointed attorney. You don't get to be there for your own initial hearing. But it can real quick escalate to criminal. If a cop goes to so grab your arm and say, sir, we're going to need you to come over here now so we can take your guns and you just go, no, get away. Now you're resisting. Now you've assaulted a police officer. Now you do have criminal charges. That You can go back and watch that video. It's in my gun rights playlist here on YouTube where he talked about. And this is a man that has decades and decades of police. And then he ultimately became the elected sheriff. He's the kind of guy that would know how this stuff works. Now, he's not for red flag laws. He voted against them. And the sheriff that took over for him in Livingston County, Michigan, says he's not enforcing them. So good on him. And I haven't heard of him enforcing any, and I hope he stays true to his word. But but, but what representative, former Sheriff Bazat, said, it's, it's that simple. That quick, it can just escalate and get cranked up to 11. Now, they say, well, this has all kinds of built-in due process. So after they grab all your guns, presumably throw them in a big pile in the front yard, take them to the police station. I'm sure they're not going to wrap them nicely. They're not going to oil them first. In fact, many police stations probably aren't even going to have room for them. So if I had to guess, I just know how this stuff works. They'll probably throw them out in an unclimate controlled pole barn, maybe in the rain. If you have two or three guns, yeah, they might just throw them in one of the deputies' trunks and take them away. But if you've got a hundred guns or hundreds of guns, which I know some of you guys do, yeah, they'll probably be stacking them, in my opinion, like cordwood in the bed of the truck, and taking just throwing them in a pile, scratching up and denting and ruining your life savings. Because some of you have collectible firearms where if it even got one little chip in the shellac or one little scratch, its value might be depreciated by 90%. Now, I know some of you are shaking your head saying all guns are tooled, are tools. As soon as you get a gun, you spray paint it. Okay, fine. But they're taking your tools from you. But there are people who do have collector grade firearms who keep them in mint condition. How's that going to be handled? You're not allowed to have ammunition. 
You're put on the prohibited person list where you can't even buy a gun and pass a background check while you're currently under the state of being red flagged. See, I'm not reading from this letter anymore because they don't put all that in there. See, they're not going to tell you how it really works. They're just going to say there's ample due process. Sure. You can come back afterwards and prove your innocence. On your own dime, you'll have to hire your own attorney because this is still a civil process. Now, remember, if the cop grabs your arm and says, sir, here, and you go, no, get off me, and the, push him away or whatever you might be tempted to do in the heat of the moment, then you'll get charged criminally. But it's civil. So if you cannot afford an attorney, oh, well, that's only criminal where you have your Mirandas. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you that you've seen in every cop movie ever. No, 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 you don't get that. You have to come back on your own dime and represent yourself. Hopefully you're good at representing yourself. Seeing how courts speak half Latin, you better learn your Latin. Tell me we don't live in a two-class society when the courts still speak in Latin. Dude, it's not even a dead language. It's an archaic language, but half their words are all in Latin, so you better be bilingual. Think about that for a minute. Pay for your own lawyer to prove your innocence. And then if you prove your innocence, you get your guns back. But hopefully, right, hopefully they're still in mint condition or whatever condition they were in. Hopefully your house isn't ransacked too bad. Hopefully your dog's okay and everyone in your house is okay. And I truly would hope they would be. And then hopefully when they go back in and correct your, your profile, if you will, with NICS, the National Instant Check System. Hopefully that gets expedited because I've known people who there was something false on their record or it took a little while for it to get expunged, just different things like that. I get a lot of comments from viewers. And they're like, dude, I had that expunged five years ago and it still shows up on a NICS check. And every time I have to go through this manual appeal, what I found, and this is anecdotal, just listening to viewers talk and talking to people at my local gun shop, a lot of times, even if you do have your record, quote, cleared up, you were falsely accused, you got your name cleared, you're good now, let's just say. A lot of times for years later, years and years later, you still get denied on these background checks because, oh, we didn't update our systems. See, this is funded by ultimately billions and very specifically $750 million to fund this. But that's not enough money. See, it's never enough money for them. It's never enough control. But even with all that money, they still rarely get it right. And that's why, as GOA reported recently, within the last year or two, 90% of all of the delays and denials by NICS are false. So you guys see where this can perpetuate? See where this can follow you around and be a problem for a long time? Even if you pay to get your innocence. You pay a good lawyer that can come in there and argue your case. In 2023, the Justice Department's Office of Justice Programs, OJP, awarded $238 million to states, territories, and the District of Columbia under the Burn State Crisis Intervention Program, SCIP. These acronyms drive me nuts, by the way. Which was created by the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act and is designed to help jurisdictions implement crisis intervention strategies, including ERPO programs. In addition, OJP awarded $4 million. This is all of from your tax dollars. Now, I know there's someone out there saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, I don't pay taxes, somebody's saying. Well, if you don't pay taxes, guess what? You're still paying for it because... 99% of all the businesses you do business with do probably pay taxes, right? And the taxes that they pay has to get passed on as a burden for their goods and services. So you're paying into this whether you like it or not, actually. But I know every time I say that, someone's like, well, I don't pay taxes. Okay, you might not. You might get a refund at the end of the year. But trust me, you're still paying for it. Everybody else is still paying for it. OJP awarded $4 million to support training and technical assistance. Think about this now. Under Burn SCIP, including $2 million. I told you guys. I told you. I saw QD in the chat earlier. Me and him had a face-to-face -face conversation about a year ago in South Carolina about these various industrial complexes. Here's where it comes into play. 
including $2 million that was awarded to the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Violence Solutions to establish the ERPO Resource Center in collaboration with OJP's Bureau of Justice Assistance, the center will support states, local governments. These are the people who you write their paycheck. They work for you. The Declaration of Independence says they're only allowed to exist at all at the consent of the governed. These are the people that you feel will be most likely to affect your safety and happiness. I mean, that's what a constitutional republic is, actually. A representative constitutional republic? That's what Thomas Jefferson said in 1776. That to them, meaning you, will be most likely to affect your safety and happiness. So here's all the people that they're funding that you pay for that are supposed to be your public servants. States, local governments, law enforcement, prosecutors, attorneys, judges, clinicians, victim service providers, behavioral health and other social service providers, and their efforts to implement ERPO programs. See, right there. You're paying for them to potentially confiscate your guns. And this offer here, by the way, this bribe money is for all 50 states. Trust me on that. The more conservative your state is, the bigger the bounty that they're bribing, bribing your state, actually. To implement ERPO programs to fit local needs, share resources, and promising practices with the field and help ensure the funding received through burn, SCIP is effectively utilized. They're training people on how to most effectively red flag you. Wow. And guys, I can say this with, with clear questioning because I gave the thing earlier where I talked about that surfer on the beach where the cops in that area, they were a quarter mile away, drug them in within close social distancing during the whatever disease that was. I can't even remember what it was called anymore. But look. Not that I ever believed any of it then either. But look, they arrested him. I watched them arrest grandmothers trying to do grocery shopping because they had emphysema and couldn't cover their face. I watched them shut down that barber shop in Michigan. I watched them arrest. Now she's a state representative, Angela Regas, on the front of the Capitol, along with a bunch of other beauticians and threatened them with their licenses and their and their livelihood and I know, I know she has a whole house full of little kids to feed, and it goes on and on and on. But I have some sheriffs in my area that said, we will not enforce. We do not stand. I can use his name publicly because me and him have had this conversation. I'll tell you a cop that's not a sheriff's deputy. He's a policeman named Rick Nieper. He's been on this channel before. He's a good friend of mine. He said, I will not. I won't flag. I won't enforce. I'm not going to do it. So that's good. And I hope there's more that won't. But I think there's some that are gonna because all cops don't like the Second Amendment. Some do, some don't. Some are just following orders. Some are like, dude, I've got kids to feed at home. I support the Second Amendment, but I still need to take your guns. I've just got a job to do. Don't take it personal, pal. I'm just putting, I mean, orders are orders, right? I'd like to be there to remind some of them of those trials that they held at Nuremberg. After that Reich that was supposed to last a thousand years in Germany was dissolved, they got a bunch of them and brought them in on trial. It was a world trial. Look it up. It's called the Nuremberg Trials. And what their defense was in almost all cases is they said, we were just following orders. And at that time, they said, no, that's not okay. And this is what you guys can do about this, where you can actually affect some change here. You guys don't have access to the current former vice president or the former junior senator from California. I can't remember how to pronounce her name because she's changed it so many times. I think she pronounces it Kamala, you know, like the dromedary. But look, you won't be able to talk to her. She's the one that's, you know, the, the, the spokesperson for this. Jeez, oh, pizza, are they desperate for spokespeople? But I digress. Look, you won't be able to talk to her, and you probably don't want to. You won't be able to talk to the current former vice president. You probably don't want to, especially if you have young children. Wouldn't let, wouldn't let them anywhere near. I'm being serious. Don't let them anywhere near these people. These people are sick. But you might be able to talk to, we'll say, officer friendly on the corner. Maybe, maybe you live in a small town where 
when the cops aren't, you know, writing the occasional parking ticket, they're helping an old lady cross the street. Maybe they're helping you change your tire. And when they're doing that, when you see them out and about, maybe you can walk up to them and talk to them. I walked up to cops just to say, hey, I'd like to talk to you about like, Get away from me. You can't approach a police officer. Look, I've met them from mile to wild. To say the police is one thing, look, you can't say that, but I, they're, they're from mile to wild. I've literally walked up to police before to say, hey, are you guys currently enforcing the red flag? But I couldn't even get that out. Just by me walking up to them, they were it, 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 like, you know, grabbing and getting all. Duh, 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 duh. I was like, dude, I'm going to get shot if I walk a couple steps further. So I just stopped and was like, whatever, dude. Just wanted to talk to you. Some will let you talk to them. Some actually won't. But I think what you guys should be doing is talking to the policemen in your hometown. If you live out in the country, in a county or a township, you might not have a local police officer. Maybe you talk to your sheriff's deputies, your sheriff, your duly elected sheriff, and find out what they're doing with this. If they're going to be enforcing this crap, maybe you get some people together and try to get a new duly elected sheriff in that will actually honor their oath to the Constitution. And that will actually care about keeping their community safe. Because look, these laws, as always, only affect the law-abiding. Criminals don't follow these laws. Are you kidding me right now? They get released with no bail whatsoever after egregious crimes like murder. Like, so look, some of these crimes that are the worst you can possibly think of, they get arrested, booked, and the next day they're walking out on the street with a tether. And a tether doesn't stop them either. Restraining orders don't stop them, never have. This only affects, like all gun control, the law-abiding citizen. And you're usually the ones that are most likely to pay for it. Because a lot of career criminals probably aren't really contributing too much to the general fund, if you know what I mean. Here's another quote. Supporting our local law enforcement, our, I'm sorry, our law enforcement, I accidentally threw local in there because that's what was on my mind. Let me reread that because I do want to be accurate. Supporting our law enforcement and community partners, see there's the local aspect, and curbing the scourge of gun violence is more critical than ever. Said the acting associate attorney general, Benjamin C. Miser, that's his name, Miser, in addition to other resources leveraged against the across the Justice Department, this center will provide communities with new tools and technical assistance to help them implement effective crisis intervention strategies and reduce gun violence. Look, guys, this gun violence thing's hyperbole. This is extremist gun grabbing talking points because a gun, a gun doesn't do anything violent. It actually doesn't do anything good. And I appreciate you, Jim Falcone. I really do, man. I, I really do. And I, I hope I don't need you someday, but if I'm in your jurisdiction and I'm getting flagged for no reason, hopefully you'll come and help me out, man. You know what I'm saying? We, we have a police officer here in the chat, and I have no reason to not trust him. So thank you, sir. I, I, I appreciate that. But, but there's a lot of them I'm worried about, a lot of them. So, look, they're going to go through, and they're going to teach, and they're going to leverage, right, and implement to reduce gun violence, but guns are neither good nor evil. They're just an inanimate object, actually. And what they fail to ever, ever mention in here, and they never want to mention this, but it's the truth. Go read Dr. John Lott's published articles, books, including the book More Guns, Less Crime. There's a multitude more of good people that stop bad people with guns every year than there are bad people who use guns to take innocent lives. In fact, we don't even know how big the number is. But it's up in the tens of millions for sure. Many people say up near 100 million times per year. In the United States, a good person with a gun stops a bad person with a gun. And a lot of times those don't even get reported or added to any numbers or databases or statistics because sometimes just showing it is enough. Sometimes it's like, halt, who goes there? Stop or I'll, whatever. You know, there's different strategies, different people train in different ways, but Sometimes just by the sheer presence or the confidence it gives you by carrying a gun gets the criminal to disperse. Because a lot of them go for the low-hanging fruit, the easy target. And by you recognizing, look, when seconds matter, 
Police are only minutes away, and they usually come to make a report of what has already happened. Ask any policeman, he'll tell you that. Occasionally, the cops will get in the middle of something, but usually they come right after something just happened. And they're there to provide first aid. They're there to try to apprehend somebody. They're there to start putting the pieces of the puzzle together of what's already happened. And most of you guys already know that. And that's why you carry a gun. Well, bad guys know that an armed society is a polite society. That's why where there's areas where they say gun-free zone. No, these are criminal empowerment zones. Because the only thing a sign on the door does or a public act in a city, county, state, whatever, is it stops all the law-abiding citizens, the good people, just like you and me. People just like you. I'm not saying literally you, but people like you from carrying a gun. And the criminals go, hmm, easy pickings there. It's true. That's where most of this craziness happens. Look at places like Chicago. Most strict gun control in the whole country. That's one of the most crime-ridden. Look at Washington, D.C. That's right up there competing with Chicago. Most crime-ridden. You can go on and on and on. These are longtime Democrat strongholds. These are places where the criminals have been empowered, and they've been treated like royalty, and you've been treated like their servants. Not the other way around. We have New York City, where they have a police department that's larger than almost every country in the world's standing army. Can you believe that? It's actually true, though. They still have shootings on the subway with the National Guard literally right there. Not to mention, while the police may choose to intervene and protect you in the middle of, I don't know, some hoodlum that's trying to shoot you or whatever, the Supreme Court has decided that while the police have the duty to protect the public at large, the Supreme Court has also said the police do not have the duty to stop and intervene and protect somebody on any given instance. There was a moment that happened on the subway system. This was New York yet again a few years ago where they were stabbing somebody to death right in front of the cops. And the cops just stood there and got in the other train car to make sure they were safe and watched it happen. And the Supreme Court said they did not have to intervene and stop that. You guys are thinking, well, duh, that's why I carry a gun. Yeah, obviously. But now they're trying to put this in place to make it where all of your worst enemies and all these people that work for the government that you pay their salary can now flag you. And it's not a matter of like, oh, well, will they ban this? See, everyone loves a loophole. That's the interesting part. People say, well, hold on. If they come up with an AWB, I'll just switch over and become a revolver man. Now, I know there's guys that love revolvers and you guys don't think this way, but I've met a lot of people that are like, I'll become a lever action man, a revolver man. I'll use the 10 round 40 magazine, wink, wink, because I can fit 11 or maybe 12 rounds of nine. See, people all think, not you guys, but the general consensus that if they can just find a little loophole, they can still always swarm around it. So I was like, eh, not worth calling my state representative today. Not worth going to a rally at my state's capital tomorrow. As long as I can still find a loophole, I'll get by. I mean, I have to go to work. I mean, people have to go to work, right? Well, of course you have to go to work. You have to work a lot of hours to fund all this. I mean, we're talking billions of dollars total. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So while you're too busy at work to pay for all this, it just creeps creepy more and more and more. But the interesting and the tragic thing about these red flag laws is, first of all, they don't work very well. I've not seen any stats yet to show they've even saved one life. The other side says they're going to show all this. Haven't seen them publish any of that information yet. But it's not just like a magazine ban or an evil features ban. No. If you get flagged, they take all of them. Every last gun. Wow. Here's a question I have for all of you. And you don't have to answer this publicly. But I want you to at least think about this. And maybe have some conversations between friends, family, people in your hometown. Maybe some of your public servants, you do you on that. But how much of this chipping away and death by a thousand paper cuts is it going to take before or if, because I don't know if it'll ever happen, the American people are just going to stand up and say, no, we're done with all of this. We were willing to do this. We were willing to do that. 
when I say we, I don't mean literally me and you. I just mean we the people. We were willing to do this. We were willing to do that. How far will they have to push this before the American people to stand up and say, I won't comply with anything anymore? Their brains are too cooked to even remember what the law is because they just keep putting more and more and more laws on the books. We have over 26,000 federal gun control laws, regulations, CFRs, rules by the ATF that have full force and effect of law. Don't believe me? <laughs> ask people like, well, ask people like Randy Weaver and people where they show up and, yeah, really sad stuff. I don't want to make you guys cry. This is a happy weekend for myself and many Christians, but we need to think about what's going on here on earth right now. How many more things? I mean, they're talking about getting right into your most intimate details. They're trying to train up and bribe up your local government, your state, your law enforcement, your prosecutors, your attorneys, your judges, your clinicians, your medical provider, victim service providers, behavioral health, social service providers. You know what I'm afraid this is going to do? And I know some of you have thought about this, and maybe you've already typed this in the chat, because what about people who do have mental health issues? Now, I know someone's already typing 2AEDU. If they have mental health issues, they shouldn't own a gun. Well, hold on a minute. Maybe sometimes they shouldn't, actually. And I'll go over, because there might be some new viewers here. And if you are, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. My whole take on who should be prohibited and who shouldn't. I'll get to that in just one minute. But you're thinking to yourself, well, if they're mentally ill, then they shouldn't have a gun. Really? Because are all mentally ill people dangerous to themselves? No, actually they're not. Are all mentally ill people a danger to others? No, actually they're not. What is mental illness? I don't think he necessarily invented it, but I used to have a Ron Paul campaign t-shirt. I wanted Ron Paul to become president about a dozen years ago. More than that now, actually. But he didn't. And he had a shirt, and I have it still at my house. It says, truth is treason in the empire of lies. So as you're sitting there thinking to yourself, well, I'm not mentally ill. I have a clean bill of health, 100%. Let's just say you're perfect. You've never even had a cold. You've never even had a smile leave your face. Your mental health so perfect. Nobody's perfect, but just humor me. But you own a gun. See, the other side is trying to demonize what's good and promote what's bad to the point where just by having a gun, maybe already, if not, I see it very soon in the future, be considered mentally ill. What if you said, I just lost my grandmother? I was really close to it. I'm just sad right now. I just want to sit home for maybe a day or two or a week, whatever you need to do, and just cry and grieve. Is that mental illness? Should they be able to have an ex parte hearing in the middle of the night? See, what is mental illness and how do you trust them how to define it? Do you guys remember the latest Supreme Court justice? See, this all ties in. I'm not changing subjects. All of this stuff ties in. It's all the same thing. It's all a battle of good versus evil. Just remember that. And once you know that, hopefully you can move forward and start fighting the good fight. But the new Supreme Court justice, the one that's literally trying to turn the bump stock case that's in front of the Supreme Court right now, she's trying to turn it into not only bump stocks getting banned, but she's going to try to establish a new rate of fire by Supreme Court so-called case law precedent. I literally listened to those hearings, okay? This is the Michael Cargill case coming out of Texas. If you guys listen to that, it's insane. And I can't even believe, well, I believe anything nowadays, but a few years ago, if you, if you would have asked me, I would have said, I can't even believe someone like this is on the Supreme Court. But hey, under the advice of the Senate, advice and consent of the Senate is what the Constitution requires for judicial nominees to get through. She was up there, and the senators were asking her. They said, <sighs> they said, Judge, what's a woman? I'm trying to remember her name. I can't really remember. I think her name was Jumanji. Do you guys remember? I think that's her name. I can't remember exactly for sure. I might be wrong on that. 
Probably not, but I might be wrong. I think her name is Justice Jamanji something or another. She got up there and they said, what's the woman? She said, I don't know. I have no clue. I have no clue what a woman is. How could anyone possibly know? And they're like, with all due respect, it's a simple question. What a woman? What is a woman? Now I'm sitting here thinking, dude, like you don't know what a woman is, but you're getting ready to establish jurisprudence. And Supreme Court precedent for everyone. I'm screaming at my screen being like, it's an adult female person. They said, what's a woman? She said, I'm not a scientist. How could I possibly know? Nobody knows, right? Nobody knows. How many genders are there? We don't know. We have no idea. Well, we have two parties in Washington, D.C., and we have two genders. Men have a penis. Women have a vagina. You probably learned that in sixth grade health class, or you just looked down when you took a pee, and you've known that your whole life, obviously. But the Supreme Court Justice, gosh, why can I never think of her name? Jumanji is her name. She, I think, she comes up and says, I don't know. Nobody knows. They've never heard of it. These are the people right now that are deciding whether you're mentally healthy or not. Just think about this. I can't think of hardly anybody on Capitol Hill, period, bureaucrat, elected, installed, or otherwise, installed during the freest and fairest elections of all time, I would note, for all the, shout out to all the YouTube employees who love this stream, by the way. I know some YouTube employees are like, this is our favorite stream every Friday night. The freest and fairest election of all time, those that were installed, elected, otherwise, whatever, into office. <laughs> Most of them throw up more red flag laws than almost anyone I've ever even heard of. I wonder what's going to happen with them. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. Probably nothing. <laughs> Someone's like, he said probably. <laughs> no, these laws don't apply to them. Like I said, these laws don't apply to criminals. They only apply to you. I'm going to read just two more paragraphs of this. OJP's investment in ERPO programs demonstrates the department's commitment to addressing the gun violence crisis in the United States, said OJP Assistant Attorney General Amy L. Solomon. Geez, our taxes just went up again. Look how many people they're hiring just to even work in this new thing. The crisis cannot be solved at any one level of government. We must use all of our resources and collaborate at the federal and the state and the local levels to find Innovate, wait, find innovative, evidence-based, and holistic solutions to help keep American communities safe. That's another way of saying we're going to come at you with all levels from all sides, right? And try to take your guns. That's how I read every last bit of this through the center and its newly launched website. I'm going to show you guys this website in just a minute here. States, local governments, law enforcement, prosecutors, attorneys, judges, clinicians, victim service providers and behavioral health and other social service providers will have direct access to critical information that will enhance their ability to reduce firearm homicides and suicides. The website will be maintained and updated to include newly developed resources for the field created through the center in partnership with BJA. The website also provides a platform for the center to highlight emerging and promising practices in successful ERPO implementation and connect states and localities to innovative strategies to reduce gun violence and save lives. They're coming up with so many sub-branches of the Department of Justice. How are you supposed to keep track of all this? Because you can't possibly remember. Like, you literally have to be insane to commit all this to memory. I've listed like 30 new branches of government just within this two-page letter. They're literally coming out with like new sub-branches and branches of government by the minute right now. When is enough going to be enough? They amended the United States Constitution about 100 years ago or so to make any type of alcoholic liquor, spirits, alcohol, right? It was called prohibition of alcohol. They made it illegal. Now, this is alcohol, and a lot of people enjoy drinking, and I'm sure a lot of you do. That was so important to the American people at that time. They said, no, 
we're going to drink. They had the speakeasies. There was a big black market that happened. And I don't think that the government made alcohol legal again for the reason most people think. They wanted the tax money is the reason, I think, obviously. But finally, it was just enough was enough. And they're like, dude, more people are criminals than aren't criminals at this point. We really don't have room to house like literally 50% of the American public in jail anymore. All right. And we can collect the tax dollars easier if we make it legal again. So basically due to mass noncompliance, they rescinded and passed another constitutional amendment to rescind the prohibition of alcohol. So we've literally seen controls come and go just by all of the people, just by all the people saying we shall not comply. See, now let me finish my thought before. Make sure you guys give me a thumbs up because there's some people that are like super ADD and they'll already hit a thumbs down and leave before I finish. But I'm going to say something very drastic here, but then I'll explain why. We actually would have been better off a few years ago, probably, probably a while ago, or maybe right now, for them to just say all guns are banned, period. Hereby, every gun is banned, and we're coming to pick them all up tomorrow. What do you guys think about that? That's not, no, 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 I, I don't support that bill, and I think that would be atrocious and terrible, but probably we'd be better off if they just do that, because then maybe... And I, I'm even going to give it a probably. The American people would stand up enough to say, no, that's it. You are not going door to door to take our guns tomorrow from our cold, dead hands, mole and lobby, come and take them. And maybe then people would literally rush out of their doors in regimental size fashion and just start marching straight towards them. Maybe that would happen and it might end all of it. So, no, I don't want every last gun picked up, but. But see, here's the problem. This is called a death by a thousand paper cuts. And they just keep going and they keep going and they keep going. And everyone says, not in my backyard. Well, that's why I wanted to talk about this tonight, because this either is in your backyard right now or I've read it 10 times. I'm not going to insult your intelligence and read it all again. If you've just joined, just go back and rewind. Shout out to all of you watching on replay, by the way. Look. They're coming right into your local communities. They're trying to bribe your state, your local policemen, your, 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 your health care providers. And this is obviously completely, completely against the Second Amendment, but it's against almost the whole rest of the Bill of Rights. This gets rid of due process. This gets rid of your right to counsel. This is a lower burden of proof when you're flagged than beyond a reasonable doubt. You don't get a jury of your peers. You get an allegation. You get a judge that has to make an expedited decision. And I already think I know how this is going to go. When in doubt, almost any judge is going to grant the order because if he doesn't grant the order and then something bad happens, he'll have blood on his hands and he probably won't get reelected. Anyone else thinking the same thing? It's kind of obvious how this usually goes. And I'll conclude with this letter, and then I'm going to read some of these generous super chats. As of this month, 21 states and the District of Columbia have enacted ERPO, red flag laws, including my state of Michigan. Successful and effective ERPO implementation requires a comprehensive and holistic approach that incorporates a wide range of stakeholders. The center is designed to provide resources consistent with that need. And I'm going to show you guys the, the center in a minute. I'm also going to show you guys a website in a minute. I'll show you guys a good website and a bad website in just a second here. QD came in right away tonight and gifted 10 2A EDU memberships. Thanks, QD. I really appreciate you, man. And those of you that are now members for the first time, make sure you go over to that members benefit section over on my YouTube channel. And you'll see some extra videos that are just for channel members and even some extra community posts where you guys will get some extra content. And hopefully you guys like that. I do some behind the scenes videos from time to time for the channel supporters. So thank you, QD. I appreciate it. And I hope you're doing good, man. Marco Polo with a super chat and a channel member. Thanks, Marco. I appreciate it. He says, Virginia holding strong. I heard your governor just vetoed a bunch of gun control. Good. Good. 
Hold him accountable. I'm wishing you guys the best in Virginia, man. Jamie Stevens with a super chat. Thanks. I appreciate it, dude. I don't see a message here, but if you did leave a message and it just didn't take with it, I'll read the chat afterwards. So I appreciate the $10 super chat and thanks for supporting, man. We have Papa Bear with another $10 super chat. Thanks, dude. He says, been a while since I caught a live. Hope everybody's doing good. Well, I'm glad to have you here and I hope you're doing good, man. I really do. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yellow Dog just became a channel member. Again, I believe. Renewed. So thank you, Yellow Dog. And I'm going to have to go over on Myriad Social in a little bit and accept all the friend requests from those of you that have gone over there. Was it easy to join Yellow Dog? I mean, you don't really join. You don't even have to make like a username and password. It's like much easier than that, which is pretty cool. And a lot more on the download than how you sign into a traditional site. So I'm just getting started over on Myriad, but I'm really excited for it. Thanks, Yellow Dog. Papa Bear again. Thank you, sir, for another $10 super chat. He says, Rhino Senator Lindsey Graham wanted $50 million included in one of the stimulus bills they passed for Pakistan gender studies. Total hatchet job. Look, dude. Oh, don't even get me started. But here's the thing. We're going to talk about Lindsey Graham in just a minute here. Because clearly at this point, all Democrats holding public office, at least in the state of Michigan, I'll say, on the state level, and then definitely on the national level, every one of them are anti-gun. All right. I think one Democrat voted against the gun control in Virginia, right? Like one, literally. But in Michigan, every one of them, including Republicans. In Washington, D.C., every Democrat votes for gun control, including Republicans, including Lindsey Graham. And that ticks me off. Because I was just in South Carolina. Gosh, it seems like I'm always in South Carolina. Well, of course, obviously, and here's why. Every time I go to South Carolina, I meet the best people. Like, I'm not going to say which state's my favorite because I meet really good people in many states. But, man, there's just something about being down south. You guys know what I mean? I can talk about Kentucky. I can talk about, I mean, we'll talk about Michigan and Ohio and stuff. Good people there, too, obviously. But there's just something about it. You pass the Ohio River and you go to the great state of Kentucky. Then you're in Tennessee. Then you're in North Carolina, South Carolina, then down to Virginia or up to Virginia. I'm sorry. I've been through. I've taken like five different routes. Then you go down to Georgia, West Virginia, not technically the South, but good people there, too. And man, I just got back from South Carolina like last week and explain this to me, guys. And explain to me what's going on in Michigan, too. Because, man, oh, man, do I know a lot of good people in Michigan. But I go down to South Carolina. And, like, everybody's just so cool. And we talk about stuff, and they're like, wow, I can't believe what's going on in Michigan right now. And a lot of them down there are like, dude, used to live in Michigan or Illinois, and they'll mention states like that. Now I live down here. And I'm going to, like, two-way and gun events when I go down south, by the way, so. For all of you that are like, whoa, we don't want any more people from the... No, these are the people you guys want to move down to the South. These are good people that think just like you. But, man, so many cool people down in the state of South Carolina. Beautiful countryside. And you guys have a senator like Lindsey Graham. How does that happen? How does it happen in Michigan where we have Gretchen Whitmer? <laughs> we have... Dana Nessel, Jocelyn Benson, our Supreme Court's flipped over to liberal. Look at the Michigan House of Representatives right now. Right now it's tied, guys. There's a huge, huge election coming up. Josh Powell's running. This, this is coming up April 16th. Right now the Michigan House of Representatives is tied. If Josh can win that race, we're talking Westland, we're talking Wayne, that, that part of the state there. That part of Michigan makes you guys get behind Joshua Powell. He's pro Second Amendment. I've talked to him at length on this topic. He's going to be a good one. But man, if he were to lose that race, I hope you guys are supporting him. Seriously, this is a big deal. We're going to have that darn Pohutsky back up there again. You remember her? <laughs> I did streams on here. Gun control passing in the middle of the night. And she's up there. The clerk will open the board. <laughs> 
immediate effects granted. It's like, wait a minute, they all just voted. This is you can't even make this stuff up. It's the middle of the night. I'm texting my favorite state representative, Jamie Thompson. She's a good one. Make sure you guys get behind her too. She's actually my favorite one. There's some good ones out there, guys. She's my favorite though. But look, I'm I'm texting her and I'm like, what just happened? How did you vote? She's like, we didn't get to vote. Wait a minute. So the unilateral authority and control is this one person up there wearing a goofy outfit? I mean, she's a real fashion statement if you guys have ever seen her. When we say real beauty, the one with that gavel up there, go back and watch my middle of the night streams if you guys don't know what I'm talking about. We say real beauty in a different type of way. She's up there and they're like, the majority floor leader, Ayash, comes up and he says, I move for immediate effect. And she goes, the clerk will open the board. Immediate effects granted. It's like, was they just voted on what? Makes me remember an old Ben Franklin quote. At the founding of this country, he was asked by a woman, sir, do we have a monarchy or a republic? He said a republic if you can keep it. And then I look at this monarchy in Lansing, Michigan. And they say, immediate effects granted. There is no vote. There is no vote, but the Constitution says that if like 20 of them rise, they can force a vote, and they do, but they don't do it. We have this one lady that hates the Second Amendment standing up there with a gavel, gaveling in decisions that will affect millions of people. What happens at your state capitol? Do you guys know? I hope you do, and I hope you're keeping an eye on what's going on. I can remember very, very specifically, they said, are there amendments? Are there amendments? And they said, yes, an amendment offered by Representative St. Germain. Now, this is Alicia St. Germain. She's actually a pro-Second Amendment rep. She's one of the good guys. And I'm like, do you guys remember this? Some of you are watching that stream I did in the middle of the night. These scoundrels were passing gun control 1, 1 30 in the morning. While everyone's asleep. We weren't, though. We were watching them. And you guys need to watch all of your 50 states. They said, is there an amendment? They said, amendment by Alicia St. Germain. And I'm like, this is going to be a good amendment for us. She's going to try to poison pill this gun control bill. And then... They said, is there support? And then I hear, I hear and watch, like three Republican reps go, support. You could hear a couple of them, you know, I support. And they they raise their hand and she goes, seeing no support, the amendment's not adopted. This is how they rushed all these laws through my home state. And I know all of you aren't from Michigan. Shout out to all the Michiganians, by the way. But, but this is where I'm watching things. And then share with me in the chat right now so I can read it later or in the comments if you're watching on replay. How are they passing laws in your state? I mean, we're talking, she's up there with a hammer. So somebody has to remember this, right? If not, if not, you guys need to know this is going on. They say, are there amendments? The clerk says, the amendment offered by Representative St. Germain. And she says, is there support? No support. Amendment is not adopted. I'm like, I'm watching Jamie Thompson down there. Representative Thompson represents Michigan's 28th district. She's my state rep. I watched her up there seeking recognition, seeking recognition, completely ignoring her, completely ignoring her, won't even acknowledge she's there. She's trying to talk. They turn the microphones off. She's a fighter. She was ready to get right in their face and stand up for a second amendment. They shut her microphone right off. I'm like, oh, isn't that great? A republic, if we can keep it. And they just silenced my state rep who's up there to speak for me and 90,000 people. <laughs> if you even whisper in the gallery, it's called the gallery where you can stand there, and sit up there and watch them. If you even whisper or accidentally sneeze, they'll kick you out. You're not allowed to yell down at the floor. And then you find out your duly elected representatives aren't even allowed to vote and whether something takes immediate effect or not. An amendment by, and it's it's by a good if it's by a good rep, they'll say no support, even though you're watching them raise their hands. 
at least on, in the United States Congress, and it's all a dog and pony, so I get it. At least they'll say, for what purposes does the gentle lady rise or the gentleman rise, right? They, they, they do that. There's some decorum there still. Just, just enough to show you that there is, right? Because they don't videotape the back rooms in Washington, D.C. And that's where the real action happens, in my opinion. All kinds of sinful action, actually. <laughs> Makes me think of stuff that goes on in D.C. What's a woman? I don't know. You should ask all these D.C. people. Doing it in the Senate chambers. And publishing it on Twitter. You guys saw that, right? When they did that? <laughs> Tell me they don't know what to do with their private parts. But they pretend. We don't know. We don't know what it is. But at least in D.C., they'll say, for what purposes does the gentleman rise or the gentle lady rise? My state representative and many of them that are trying to stop this crap, they're standing there to seek recognition. And they're like, do I see any that are opposed? Oh, there's no opposed? And they're like, here, here, let me. And they're, and, and, and then they're like, oh, don't see anybody out there. <laughs> That's how the red flag laws passed in Michigan. I mean, this stuff's literally nuts. Sometimes when they do offer a little bit of a debate, and look, just because they're Republican doesn't mean they're good. Republicans in Michigan, including, unfortunately, the House Minority Leader Matt Hall, voted for gun control. But the good Republicans there who are on our side, and I've named a few, and I want you guys to know who the good ones are. They'll start to debate just a little bit, and then as soon as that, they call her Pohutsky, they call her many things, that one with the big old hammer up there, and she's a mean one, just look at her. Urgh, she's. I mean, she'll laugh every time they pass it, trust me. Abraham Ayash, I move for immediate effect. The clerk will open the board. Immediate effect is adopted. It's like, whoa, 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 yeah, her. She'll gavel them down right when they're in the middle of making their best arguments. She'll say, representative, we won't allow standing for the Constitution in this House chamber. It's like, that's essentially what she says. I mean, in my opinion, that's all I've ever heard her say. Anytime you talk about the Constitution, you just get gaveled right down. Look at Michigan Representative Josh Shriver. He's lost his staff. He's only allowed to come on the House floor to vote. They've done everything they can to try to make sure that the people in his district have no representation. But I'm noticing now that he hasn't mired down as much with his office and all that. He's actually probably being more effective out winning the culture war for the people in his district. We're actually going to have him on this channel in just a couple weeks. So you guys might want to hear from him. But he was censored like crazy. They're all arguing, what's a woman? Nobody knows. He like tweeted this meme talking about this certain... How do we word this on YouTube? It has to do with replacing things, if you know what I mean. And he just retweeted a meme. They said, he's racist. I looked at the meme. That's not racist. This is something all the left's bragging about doing. They want to replace you, too. They don't just want to get rid of your Second Amendment protected right to keep him bare arms, they actually want to get rid of you too, is what they're bragging about. He tweeted about that. And they got mad at him, and they said, you're racist. And now I, I literally did investigative journalism. I just scoured this guy's feed. Just scoured it like crazy. I'm like, let me see if there's any there there. Dude's like the most least racist person I've ever met. He's saying stuff on there like, Jesus loves everybody. Well, that's racist. So, Speaker Tate, he's a Marine. What do you Marines think about that? He's a Marine. He took the oath in many forms as a representative, as Speaker of the House, to defend and uphold right the Constitution, to defend it against enemies foreign to domestic, he's sworn many times. That's tough, man. I hate, I hate it that people like him give our troops such a bad name. Shout out to all the awesome veterans in this chat, man. I have a lot of good friends who serve their country for all the right reasons. And then you have people like him. What's the saying of those type? Blue Falcons? Is that what you guys call them? I never serve, but I have a lot of friends that, that have and that do. Football player, right? Hmm. <laughs> That's who's running this crap. So Speaker Tate said, Representative Shriver, you better apologize. 
you better denounce denounce what you said. And he's like, what? What did I say? I just retweeted something that you guys are all bragging about. And he said, nope, you'll denounce your racism or else. And he came back to the Speaker of the House and essentially, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially just said Jesus loves everybody. And that was the worst mistake he could have made. Because when Jesus, when he said Jesus loves you and loves people of all colors, that's when they really came down on him. Because they were mad that he was bringing light to their scheme that they're doing. They were really mad at that, but they completely and utterly lost their minds when he dared out of the word Jesus. I'm telling you guys, I know some of you guys don't like it when I talk about my Christian faith, and some of you do, and if you don't like it, we can still be friends. You'll get over it in a few minutes, I promise. But Jesus hung on a cross 2,024 years ago today so that not just me or you, so that everybody might be saved, so that you have a chance. And these people are literally putting their boot on your neck right now and trying to make you feel powerless and make you feel like there's nothing to hope for. And I'll tell you what works for me. And it's hard, guys. I'm, <laughs> Trust me. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and I definitely have, and I do. And I'm far from perfect. I make mistakes all the time, but I'm trying to do my best to fight the good fight here. Because I don't think that, like, when you leave this world, that's the end of things. I think that's actually just the beginning. And we need to value our time on earth, and we need to use our time on earth to fight this battle of good versus evil. And I believe a lot of you are good people. I know you are. I've met so many of you. Got to hang out with you guys in chats on here and in real life. And I believe these people are evil. Jesus died that they may be saved too, actually. And that's between them and, and God. And I can't control their destiny. But when he said Jesus loves everybody, that's when they lost their ever-loving minds. They removed his whole budget from his office where he no longer has staff that works there to answer the phone and help write bills. They've almost completely banished him from the property. We're talking about Representative Josh Shriver here, who I've hung out with in real life, outside of work, if you will, outside of his work. I don't work in Lansing, Michigan, but I've talked to him on a total casual basis where he's not even in that Capitol building. And I'm like, this is like one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Can you imagine that? You say something you don't like, they don't like, they immediately say you're bigoted, you're racist. Immediately. Talk about projection. These are the people that literally passed the budget. Ask Representative Steve Carr, who slept for a week or whatever it was, outside of Speaker Joe Tate's office, that literally just passed a budget that says, we're going to carve out all this money and give it to people that aren't white. Everyone can apply for it unless you're white. Like These people are literally doing this. But if you disagree with them, they say, you're the racist. And that's supposed to cancel you. And make it where you have no leg to stand on whatsoever. And they come up with all these fancy label lists for people. If you love your country and you believe that you should put America first. Maybe you think just like I do. Many, many fine people throughout this world. And there, there truly are. In every country there is, there's awesome people that live there. And bad people, obviously. But you believe right now where we're getting invaded at our southern border like we never have before. And now they're just flying them in from all over the place. Right? Just flying them right in. You don't have a country if you don't have borders. Every country knows that. Except for apparently the United States. No, they know it. It's all part of their plan, obviously. But if you're just like, dude, we just need to put America first right now. You know, the federal government, your tax dollars, are not only funding this crazy crap. 
but they're sending money to Israel and they're sending money to Gaza at the same exact time. And the current former vice president's bragging that he's going to now colonize Gaza, Palestine, whatever you want to call it. Can't even remember what they call half those places there anymore. But going on for thousands of years, but the politically correct terms change like the wind. But eh, luckily I'm not smart enough to be politically correct. But if you say, look, I just need to put my country first right now. And best of luck to all these other countries out there. But we just need to focus on ourselves. They call you a nationalist. They do. In a pejorative way. And if you believe that Jesus died on the cross. I said there's many, many good people out there. But nobody's truly good. Except for Jesus was actually truly, truly good. And for that, Pharisees, in front of Pontius Pilate, can anyone find fault in this man? And they say, crucify him, crucify him. The Pharisee Jews, is, I mean, they, they let the murderer free and kill the only, the only good person that's actually ever walked this earth. Truly good, perfect person. So we shouldn't really be too surprised by this. But if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, and you believe that the only way to heaven is through him, and that you can't get there on good deeds alone, and if you believe that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get to heaven, if you believe that, or any of these things, they label you as a Christian. Now you're thinking, well, yeah, obviously. And some of you are and some of you aren't. But if you're labeled as a Christian, that's a pejorative now. And that puts you on watch list. If you buy Bibles, and I've recently bought more Bibles, you get put on a list. Now, will that list cross with this list with the red flags? I don't know. But if I had to guess, probably. Probably, actually. Like, definitely Look, people are born differently. We're all not the same. That's a good thing. Like, you don't want to be just like me, and I don't want to be just like you, but I, I do like hanging out with you, and I know a lot of you like hanging out with me, but we're just not the same in so many ways, psychologically and biologically. And some of us have different colors of skin. My skin happens to be white. That's how I was born. And you know what? I'm white whether I want to be or not. But by the way, I am glad I'm white and I don't regret the color of my skin. And you shouldn't regret whatever color you are. I truly mean that. Whatever color you are, why would you regret that? Be ashamed of that. God created you in his image and thinks you're beautiful. So if you're a white person, which by the way, I have no problem being white. And I'm glad that I am actually. I'm not going to apologize to anybody for it. So I'm white. I believe Jesus died for my sins, and I believe we should put America first. Well, they would label someone that fits all of those criteria, a white Christian nationalist. And if you're that, you're supposed to be the worst kind of person there ever was. Now, if I would have just walked up and said, white Christian nationalist, some of you would have just gasped and been like, oh my gosh. But after we sat there and went through it a little bit, just think about that. Think about how crazy all this is. This world's gone crazy. And here's what I think all of you should start doing on the local level, on the state level. If you've got some crazy representing you, maybe you need to run for office yourself. Maybe you need to find someone who is good and get behind them. Because right now, they literally have so much unchecked power and power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. You're not going to be able to wave this magic wand and just change everything, but you might be able to get a decent county sheriff elected in your county that won't enforce these tyrannical red flag laws. You might be able to find somebody good to get behind for your city council or your township board or your county board of commissioners. Now, your state representative is going to represent quite a few people. It might be six figures, and your state senator 
Oh, probably about three times more than that. But I guarantee you, just by doing a little bit of checking out, you know, what they're, I don't know, in the local newspaper, a lot of them like to use Facebook. I'm posting lots of local events in Michigan on my Myriad social. So check out the links to that down in the description as well. You can find a coffee hour to see where your state rep and senator stand. Let's try to right now just start focusing even more than we ever before on our friends, our family, our hometown, our local public servants, these people who work for you, who operate at the consent of the governed. See, here's the problem, man. If you if you go tell them, yes, I consent to you taking away all my guns or passing any gun control law you can think about, that's obviously consent. That's support. Now, if you oppose it, you're not consenting. You're opposing it. And I don't just mean in your mind. I mean by actually like vocally and boots on the ground trying to fight back against your opposition and put in people who will stand for the Second Amendment, getting them elected instead, in other words, right? But here's the thing, and here's where the devil's in the details, and this is the devil that gets us so often. Because this is a battle of good versus evil. This is the devil, in my opinion. If you just do nothing, you actually consent to. Evil prevails when good men do nothing. And when you, and I don't mean the literal you, just y'all, people you know, whatever, right? When they just collectively do nothing, they just sit there and say, well, it must be fine. I just keep getting reelected. The more tyrannical I get, the more I keep getting reelected. And I know it sucks because you have to work. I have to work. We all have to go to work. And these people get paid to protest. They get bust in by, by all these different groups, all these billionaires. I know. And it is really, really tough. Maybe we, the people that support the Second Amendment, can work a little harder. I hope. Let me know what you guys are doing. Let me know. Just, just try to give me a little hope because I try to give you guys hope. I've literally tried to offer real life solutions like today. Maybe someday we all say no one will comply. Maybe that's the answer. I don't see that happening right now, but hopefully maybe someday. I'm already spending as much time as I can in my hometown and online talking about Local candidates, we're in an election year. I was just down in South Carolina, got to meet some of you in real life, which was was really cool. Um, I'm going to be in my next place I'm going to be publicly. Let me think if there's somewhere in between. Go check out my Myriad social. The link's down there in the description. You can see I have different timelines over there. The link's to my profile. Just the right, you'll click timeline. Make sure you check out some of those deals over there, especially if you're looking for 9 mil right now. Yeah, there's something really, really good. But there's, a, there's an events timeline I created on Myriad. And you can see an event I'm going to in Grand Traverse County. So I hope I'll, hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. And then a month later, there's another one in Livingston County, the 2A Patriot 2A days. So I go to events. Let's see here. I was on the phone with my state representative the day before yesterday, texting my state senator, maybe a week before that. Um, on my to call list is one of my um, township trustees. Two of my um, board of commissioners, county board of commissioners. And yeah, and I'm going to have another event to tell you guys about coming up soon too, like I believe it's about a month from now. When I get the flyer, I'll be sharing that. So make sure you're checking out my locals, my Myriad social, because that's where I can share stuff like this. But I'm going to know how you guys can get ammo for, like, before the current former vice president, like, for that price. So I'll be announcing an event like that, too. Like, before the current former vice president got in office. You guys might not believe me right now, but... Yeah, I'm actually bringing that to an area in southeastern Michigan. I'm not bringing it. I'm going to be bringing attention to that. So just stay tuned to some of these alternate sites that I'm posting on because, yeah. So here's the tough part. And some people get mad when I talk about this. 
A lot of people got mad at me on my last YouTube video. It's okay. If them getting mad at me provides happiness for them, then I guess that's a net positive. I served my purpose, right? But here's what the really tough part is, is when Republicans vote for this crap. Now, elections are coming up. This is the Senate Republican Policy Committee. And my friend earlier, who left me a couple super chats, Papa Bear, brought up the rhino, Lindsey Graham. Let's bring him up again and about yeah, 10 other senators. So all of this stuff for these nationwide red flag laws and many, many other things. The new ATF rule that we talked about a couple months ago on this channel that hasn't gone away, by the way. We're just waiting for the final one to get published and shoved down our throat. The one that says you'll most likely have to be an FFL to even be able to transfer your lawfully owned firearms property. That one. Yeah. That all derived from this Safer Communities Act. Having extended background checks, unless you're if you're 21 and under, and all this extra rigmarole and hoopla and 10-day delays and all this, that all happened. You're old enough to die for your country at 18, not a problem, but you can't buy a rifle here as a civilian at that age? Insanity, obviously. But all of this stuff, so much bad has come from this bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Now, in the legislature. Now, the ATF, yeah, they're making laws via edict, via rulemaking. <laughs> the Administrative Procedures Act, by the way, that needs a major overhaul, if not completely eliminated. We need to just eliminate all this bureaucracy. Let's call it spade a spade. But in the Constitution, which is supposed to be the supreme law of the land, it says Congress makes law. Well, Congress has two chambers. The lower chamber, the People's House, the United States House of Representatives, with the upper chamber being the United States Senate, which, by the way, wasn't supposed to be voted on by democracy because democracy is mob rule. That's two wolves voting against one sheep on what's for dinner. No, no, no. The original Constitution said senators were supposed to be voted on by your state legislature, which would actually make people pay more attention to local politics. And it actually made the state legislators much more powerful. They removed a lot of power from your state and brought it into mob rule, just majority wins for the Senate. Don't forget that. The United States, the Republic, if we can keep it, like Ben Franklin said, was not founded on senators being elected by a popular vote. It was your state legislators that were supposed to put up the United States senators. But So the lower chamber is the House, the upper chamber is the Senate. The Senate is supposed to be of the more educated men because you go through all the vetting for your local state rep, and then they get together and choose the senators and that's just how, whether you agree with that or not, that's how the founding, that's how the founding fathers in the original Constitution said we would elect senators. That got changed by constitutional amendment. And I actually don't support any amendments past the Bill of Rights because every time we've amended this Constitution, we've gotten further. We've gotten further away from the United States of America and as it was intended. So with that said, the Senate has a unique ability, and it's called the filibuster. So it's technically, oh, it's technically still majority wins, because in the House, it's just the majority of representatives that vote. Whatever the majority is, that's if it passes the House. Okay, the Senate's a little different. They have the filibuster, meaning before they can what's called evoke cloture. So before they can close debate, before they can close the debate, it actually has to pass a two-thirds majority threshold. Okay, well, for it to be able to do that, even though the Democrats do control OK, they do control the Senate and there was different deals that were made back and forth. It goes on and on. It goes back to when Harry Reid was the majority leader. Then when Mitch McConnell was the, the majority leader and now with Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell's compromised your rights away as much as he possibly can. All of these have, whether it was the Democrat Harry Reid or whether it was Mitch McConnell or whether it was Chuck Schumer, these guys have never, ever, ever passed up a chance to compromise on your natural right to keep and bear arms. So this means Republicans, for it to get that threshold, they would have to cross over with Democrats to get groundbreaking legislation like the Safer Communities Act to become law. 
Now, when I start ripping on Republicans, people get all ticked off because we've gotten in this whole gang warfare mentality where everyone's like, oh, well, this is blue versus red. And if you're not the right color and you're not, and if it's not your guy or this is your guy or whatever, people get like really, really personally offended. That's not my goal just to like offend anyone inherently. But here's the problem. These people, and I'm going to read off some Republican senators right now, they voted for gun control. I wish they didn't, but they did. Now, let's just say one of these is still your guy. Wouldn't that get you even more mad? Wouldn't that get you more mad if they're voting for gun control or calling for gun control? Maybe you need to get off all your butts and win in the court of public opinion and let these guys know that, look, just having an R behind your name ain't going to be enough. You actually have to defend the Second Amendment or you are not going to get reelected because that's all they care about is their power, obviously, especially these here. So I don't know what it is with just, I guess, just the general public or just the way people are, that if you call out somebody's person that they really like, they get like really, really mad. Like at me, it's like, guys, I'm not running for anything. I'm not elected to anything. I vote on absolutely no bills at any level that are going to affect your life. Now, I do vote, but I don't vote on bills because I'm not elected to anything. And I'm not going to be elected to anything because I'm not running for anything. But they get more mad at me for telling you guys about these than the ones who actually voted for it, which boggles my mind. I know most of you don't, but anytime I do this, I lose subs. I get thumbs downs. People write nasty comments. I mean, it is what it is, but it's like, or you can try to like vote these people out and primary them. I'm not a Democrat supporter. I'm not suggesting that instead of instead of Donald Trump, we should have Joe Biden. No, I never said that, and I never will say that. But Trump's called for red flag laws. If he's your guy and you love him to death, I'm not going to change your mind. Why? Because I'm not going to be able to, and I don't even want to. I'm not like that. Maybe what you should do if Trump's your guy because of how adamantly he has called for red flag laws and how he's the one that actually started all of this, maybe you put a bunch of public pressure on him to get him to correct his ways. I didn't think I needed to say that in the last video, but apparently I do. Not for most of you watching, but for some people. Look, if he's still your guy and you're like, look, I, I, I love the Second Amendment, but I just want Trump to be in office more than anything. If that's the case, you do you. You're allowed to think that way, I guess. But why don't you try to put some more public pressure on him? Maybe if the whole 2A and gun community together would get in there and say, Trump, that's it. You did this before. And this is just assuming you guys want to vote for him. If we vote for you again, you better not. I mean, maybe that's what you do. I don't know what you do, but... It doesn't mean, like, just because I call out Trump for starting all this with red flag, okay? I don't call him out because I want Joe Biden to be president. Obviously not. This is the worst current former vice president we've ever had. I call out these senators and I call out Donald Trump because they support red flag laws. That's why I call them out. Because the Second Amendment to me is more important than any colors. It's more important than any one person. I believe the Second Amendment is actually probably the most important amendment. It's hard to decide because they're all beautiful. But I believe the Second Amendment was put there not for if, but for when. They come for all the rest. And they are coming for all the rest. And when they passed this Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, Republican Senator McConnell from the great state of Kentucky, voted for it. From Texas. You can't, I, I wouldn't even believe this stuff. Like, I don't want to believe it, but it happened. Cornyn, Cornyn of Texas voted for this. This is the law that passed that all of this stuff came from. From North Carolina, Tillis. From Missouri, Blunt. From Maine, Collins. Back to Lindsey Graham again. Lindsey Graham from South Carolina. From Louisiana, Cassidy. 
from North Carolina again, Burr. So both senators in North Carolina voted exactly the same way for gun control as both senators from New York, New Jersey, California, Michigan, and Illinois. I was just in North Carolina a couple days ago. North Carolina does not remind me of that type of state. I hope you guys know in North Carolina, though, what happened with that. In Utah, Romney. In Ohio, Portman. Some of these aren't in office anymore, but most of them are. In West Virginia, Capito. That's the Republican. Then the other senator from there is Manchin, and he's supposed to be pro-Second Amendment, but he voted for it too. Ernst from Iowa. Wow. Murkowski from Alaska. Alaska? Like, everybody owns a gun in Alaska, literally. And Young of Indiana. And Senator Toomey did not vote on it, but he did vocally support it and urged all senators to support it. RFKs for gun control? Absolutely, yes. If any of these senators are your guy or your gal, start that public discourse to get them aware of the fact that they can't just keep getting reelected with an R behind their name and voting for gun control. That would be my suggestion. Or if you need to vote otherwise, then vote otherwise. But I'm definitely not suggesting you guys vote for Democrats. Because on the federal level, like every Democrat votes for gun control like all the time. And in Michigan, in the House and Senate, every Democrat has voted for gun control every single time. Now, we're not going back years and years ago. There'll be a couple that would cross, but I'm talking in the current session right now. I don't know what it is that the Dems do if they have dirt on them, if they, <laughs> well, how come, how come these Republicans can never get dirt on the Dems to get them to vote against gun control? Why doesn't it work that way? I wonder why. Anyone have any ideas of how that works? Hmm. I know there is some backroom dealings in Washington, D.C. I mean, especially with, I mean, Mitch McConnell, that's the Senate minority leader. That's probably why they're in the minority, because so many people I talk to are like, dude, I don't even vote anymore because I can't tell the difference between a Republican and a Democrat. And I think you should vote. It's your right and it's your duty to vote if you look at what the Founding Fathers wrote. I'm not saying you should have to choose between this one that'll take your guns or that one that'll take your guns, but it's called primaries. It's called local elections. And like I've said a million times, I'll say it again. If there's nobody good running at all, maybe run yourself. Or find someone that you think would be really good and try to help them out a little bit. You can help out people in many ways. By just talking, by knocking doors. If you've got extra cash, you can donate. There's a ton of ways that you can quote help. And I hope we don't just sit back and just take these Republicans for granted. I hope we don't just sit back and do nothing because evil prevails when good men do nothing. And here's what I would like to see happen. I definitely don't want the current former vice president getting reelected. I don't want Gavin Newsom. I don't want Kamala Harris. I don't want any of that, but Maybe because he's a populist. Maybe if there's enough court of public opinion out there. I don't know. You guys tell me. First of all, tell me if what I'm about to play is okay with you. And then, well, get mad at me if you want. Tomorrow we'll still be friends, whatever. But this is just true. I don't play what I'm about to play because I want to. I play it because this actually happened. And I know Trump's your guy. For so many people that watch this. 
and not everybody, obviously. There's people here who hate Trump. There's people watching this where he's your guy no matter what. And there's a bunch of lesser the two evils people. Look, I get all sides of all of it. I totally get it. We just need to get it to where when we have Republican presidents, they stop saying crap like this. Maybe the court of public opinion can get him to stop calling for crap like this. President Trump at the White House today addressing the nation after two mass shootings in less than 24 hours. We are outraged and sickened by this monstrous evil. Offering a solution to stopping gun violence. That is why I have called for red flag laws, also known as extreme risk protection orders. It's a law going into... I don't like that either. Think about where you're at right now. You're sitting here in your left hand thinking about this current former vice president. And he's implementing all of this. And then in your right hand, you're like, how did this come to be? And you just watched a clip of the former president calling for extreme risk protection orders. And then him calling for it and all of these Republicans voting for it. And here we are with the bipartisan Safer Communities Law. And that law has billions of dollars earmarked for it, but $750 million specifically earmarked to bribe all of your states. You know what I mean? And there's still somebody in the chat right now and that's fine I, look it's all good man whatever you know do what you do i i'm not trying to change anybody's opinion on who to vote for right now i'm actually trying to get all of the trumpers to be like hey i'm trying to get all the trumpers to get up there and maybe change his mind somehow in the court of public opinion but i was just accused of you didn't watch the full clip without cuts guys look that's cute that you said that. If I wanted to go at nauseum or ad hominem, I could sit here for two hours and play all the clips of him calling for gun control. I'm not trying to do that. Somebody just literally said in my chat, somebody who's been a regular of the channel, I recognize the name, I think, said, look, you didn't play the whole clip. I could literally sit there, guys, and play two hours of Trump calling for different types of gun control. There's not one clip. There's not two clips. There's dozens of clips, and I'm not going to show them here. All I'm trying to bring awareness to is this. This whole just, if we just get the Republicans in, if we just, well, yeah, getting the Republicans in control is a start because they're less worse in many cases, but what what, what good do they do us when we have McConnell, Cornyn, Tillis, Blunt, Collins, Graham, Cassidy, Burr, Romney, Portman, Capito, Ernst, Murkowski, Young, Toomey supporting. After the Republican president of that time literally called for it. And I know what's going through half your heads right now is, yeah, Trump after us, screw him. The other half are like, dude, shut up. Don't talk bad about Trump. I'm not talking bad about Trump. I'm standing for the Second Amendment which is more important than Trump. It's more important than me. It's more important than you. It's more important to any of these things. This is one of the core fundamentals of our country. Of course, I'm not a Biden supporter, obviously. What I'm trying to do right now, and he doesn't know who I am, this is a small channel, and it got a whole lot smaller. I'm sure it just got a lot smaller because I just talked about what these Republicans do. But that's okay, because I don't apologize for being a Second Amendment absolutist, not to my enemies and not even to my friends. But maybe Trump can hear me talking like this and straighten his act up. Maybe he can hear you. Maybe he won't hear me or you, but if enough people. Look, the conservative media industrial complex won't ever dare bring this stuff up. They won't dare bring any of this stuff up that we're talking about tonight because it doesn't sell good enough. It 
if I was famous or if you were famous, maybe we could get the ear of President Trump and we could get the ear of these senators. But the real famous people won't bring up these topics because they're really, really tough to have. And I hate having to play a clip of Trump going against the Second Amendment because I hate that he went against the Second Amendment. And if I don't play the clip, then nobody believes me. I'm just all putting this in the context of how we got here, guys. This is how we got here. Here's where we are. Reagan banned machine guns where you can't afford them anymore in 1986. George Bush Sr. banned imports on assault rifles, quote unquote, and made it where now you have to have them chopped up in little pieces and converted with no more than 10 foreign parts and all of that kind of stuff. Some of you, the especially into AKs and HKs and stuff like that, know exactly what I'm talking about. Clinton passed the assault weapons ban, which sunset 10 years later. And Junior, Bush Jr. did let that sunset, but then he passed the Patriot Act. Guys, trust me, if I was here to pass Trump, there's no shortage of content. I could literally play it for hours. I'm just hoping when Jamin, who's one of the two brothers that founded Palmetto State Armory and currently the head honcho of Palmetto State Armory, when he asked Trump, he goes, if you get in office again, would you get rid of this brace thing? And I don't even think Trump knew what he was talking about because he had no clue what he had unleashed when he banned bump stocks in the way he did it. Remember, even Obama said, I can't ban bump stocks. I can't do it. I want to, but I can't. It's not a machine gun. And Trump said, no, do this end around and use Chevron deference and just get it done. That's where all this other crap we're dealing from came from. But shout out to PSA, by the way, who I'm big fans of. And I was just hanging out with people from there just a couple days ago. I have a lot of good friends that work there. And they don't think that that's okay. I don't know who they're voting for. Let's assume they're all voting for Trump. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I haven't asked them. But Jamin's his name. He's the head of PSA. And he, he called out Trump right to his face on TV. And what I saw just by reading body language, he's like, oh, that'll be easy. I'll take care of it. I hope it wasn't just to shine on. But by him actually saying that to his face, that's part of the culture war. That's awesome. Now, I know Jamin didn't have time, I'm assuming, to say, and red flag laws, and this, and this, and this. But he did say, can you take care of the... Um, can you take care of the pistol braces? Can you take care of the rule when you, you know, if or when you get reelected, however you word it is. So that was cool. See, see guys, look, he's a folk hero and he actually is. That's like folk hero status stuff to call out the former president right to his face and say, if you get elected, will you repeal this? Dude, I love Jamin for doing that. That was so cool. Jamin McCollum's his name. I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm never going to get folk hero status because I'm not famous and I'm not as cool as him. And that's totally fine. He's obviously a cool dude. I mean, runs PSA. I just get people mad at me because I, I'm, I'm trying to be like, dude, we need to call out Trump on some of this BS. So if he's your guy, you can do better. Try to get him to do better. Oh, well. Some of you guys that are real mad at me tonight might not be so mad next week. Maybe you're mad forever, and if it is what it is, whatever, but I don't know, man. Second Amendment's really, really important stuff. And I was kind of like, I've always been the type of person that if somebody, if you like somebody and they screw you over, you should actually get on them worse. Does anyone believe that? I'm not asking you that you should believe that. I'm just asking you if you do. 
I've said it before. Why would I? Why would I lie to you? You guys don't want me to get up here and lie to you, do you? I mean, I don't think so. Trump's not my guy. I'm an absolutist the way I vote for the Second Amendment. But I know he's a lot of your guys, and that's okay if he is. Maybe all of you who are big Trump fans can somehow, through the court of public opinion, put some pressure on him to get him to do better. That would be awesome. It really would. I don't know if that's possible or not, but I certainly hope that nobody's fans of him because of the wrath of gun control he put down on all of us. I think a lot of you are fans of him in spite of it. And if that's the case, then do what you can. This is a populist we're talking about here. If enough people start talking about this stuff, might be able to get him to change his mind. And I truly mean that. Might not be able to. I don't know. It's going to be a tough election for a lot of people, though, isn't it? You're up against... The current former vice president and the former president. Wow. As far as the Second Amendment goes, wow. I really hope he's going to do better, guys. I do. I'm not a fan, but if you guys are, let's see what we can do. I'm trying to somehow, with the little teeny bit of reach I have, try to get it to where maybe a little bit of pressure on him can as escalate up there, you know. Gail Geber just chimed in and said, I watched you in the middle of the night. Crimes committed by Michigan officials. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy this stuff that goes on right now. It's like, really? Wow. So I'm going to um, read a couple chats here. Let me just show you guys two things because we've been going over two hours and I did not realize this stream had gone so long. So I am going to get off just a little bit here. Look, guys, it's just not good for business, is my personal opinion. Why you don't hear any of the guys that actually have millions of viewers. Look, not, not saying I want them to support Biden. I'm not saying I want them to talk you out of voting for Trump. One more time, I'm not saying that. But it'd be nice if some of them would at least call him out on what he's done in the past. So that if he is our guy, he'll know he needs educated. You know what I'm getting at? I, that, that, that's the argument I get from people all the time. He just needs educated. That's what we're doing right now. I'm educating about him right now so that he can be educated about himself, I guess. He's probably smarter than me on almost everything you can think of. He probably knows more than me on almost everything you can think of. But clearly, I know more about the Second Amendment than Trump does, so let's try to teach him about it if that's your goal. If you're done with him and hate him, well, then don't vote for him either. That's fine. Vote for him if you want. If you don't want to vote for him, don't vote for him. That's my advice. Literally, you do you. I'm not a fan. A lot of my friends are. It's that simple. Right? At the end of the day, some people judge people by their words. Some people judge them by their fruits. Some people say, look, someone messes up. We can forgive them and give them another chance. There's all kinds of ways to look at this. Yeah. <laughs> Screw me on the Second Amendment. I have a hard time forgiving, at least in the capacity of a public official, right? So look at this. This is nuts here. I want to show this real quick. I just want to show it to you because this is actually this new extreme risk, National Extreme Risk Protection Order, ERPO Resource Center. Can you guys see this? And then I'll show you something a little nicer right after this before we jump off. Okay. This is the, <laughs> remember I talked about the educational industrial complex, right? Look, I'm not telling anyone who to vote for. I'm just saying we need like, we need to make it where there's not anti-Second Amendment in the White House. Look at this. This is what we get when there was this big hoopla about red flag laws a few years ago when the current former vice president wasn't even in office when the calls for it started. And then, of course, this came through when he was in office and he signed it. But you need to know the history of stuff. You need to know what the problem is, and then hopefully you can fix it. And if one of these senators is your guy, blow up their office inbox, 
with emails and say, enough of this crap. No more voting for red flag laws. Whatever it is you have to tell them. I don't know. Maybe they'll listen to you. Maybe they won't. But look at this. This is the this is this ERPO.org. This is funded by the federal government. And look at what this says right here on the top left. You guys can browse this later. It's just ERPO.org. Johns Hopkins, Bloomberg School of Public Health. I mean, you can't even make this stuff up. Now Bloomberg's involved in this? Of course he's involved in this. Ah. The National ERPO Resource Center, a project of the Center for Gun Violence Solutions. Dude, this has training. This has state-by-state -state tools. I mean, you can go through here and choose your state. And it's literally, look, law enforcement. This is to gin up law enforcement to try to take your guns. This is to gin up all the judges against you, your families and household members. This is where they're literally trying to turn families against each other. You can't make this up. It says in 16 states, family and household members are eligible to petition for ERPOs when they are. Con I mean, it's <sighs> clinicians. Here's your health care providers, your attorneys, your social service providers, ERPO process, dot, 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 dot. I mean, due process protections. Oh, yeah. Take the guns first, then due process. Like Trump said when he was in front of Feinstein and Coronet and all them. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. No, no, no. That's no due process at all. The Bill of Rights literally protects you from taking your property without due process of law. They can't take it without due process of law. But they take first. Then you can have due process. Like this stuff requires a listener to be dumber than the speaker. Here we go. Here's training dates. I'm telling you guys. Meet me in Grand Traverse County. Meet me in Livingston County. Let's uphold the Second Amendment. These guys are telling you all the, the dates and events and seminars you can go to to learn how to flag people better. I mean, this is like a real deal here. Look at this thing. You can go through for your states. Let's look at the great state of Michigan. Submit. Last updated, 215 of 2024. Michigan's ERPO was signed. Went into effect February 13th. <laughs> I mean, this is heavy duty stuff. Wow. All right. Well, I'm going to leave you guys with this note and share something nice here for you. And then I'm going to check on chats at the last minute before I have to, to jump out. Tulsi, that's a whole other thing you guys can think about. That's another long, hard thing. She has adamantly called for gun control on like many, many occasions in the past. Now she says she's good. You know what I mean? Now she's good, they say. She says, you got to make up your minds on all this stuff. There's two different types of people out there. There's people that are hoping that something can be better, and that's good. Not making fun of that at all. There's other people that are just like, hey, I just judge it by its fruits. What did it do before? Will it do it again? Can people change? I don't know what the exact right answer is right now, but certainly I hope we can all agree on this. No one wants Trump in office if he's going to pass more meaningful gun control than Obama, do they? I don't think anybody wants that. So either you don't want him in office at all, or if you do, I think we could all at least agree on that. You want him to get the word gun control out of his mouth and repeal some of these things, right? So let's figure out what we have to do. Good night, all of you guys who are saying good night. And there's, um, just want to show you guys one more thing real quick while we're here. Because I talked about a couple events that I'm going to be going to. And if you want to see those events, I left a link to Myriad, which is a new site that I've just started using. I talked about it right at the beginning of the stream a little more. So go back and do some rewind, but here's my events timeline that I created. And you guys can create your own pages on here and your own timelines. You can bring stuff in from other sites. It's a cool thing. We're going to talk more about it as time goes on because I'm looking forward to using this site. But here's the one in Fowlerville, Michigan. Here's the one that I'm doing up and or going to 
I'm not hosting either of these events, guys. I'm going to be guest speakers at both of these. In Fowlerville, Michigan, and then up in Grand Traverse County. So you guys can go check that. Also, if you guys want to see me shoot the micro dagger in real time, you guys don't need to create an account over here like you think. You can literally just, if you want to sign up for an account, you can use your email, and it gives you like a magic link where you don't even have to use. It's like way more secure than username and password. You can log in with your crypto wallet. This is all on the blockchain, so it cannot be deleted. But you'll go over to here, shooting videos. You'll click see more, and you'll see me shooting. So this is the new PSA Micro Dagger. These are going to be my very first shot. So you guys can see the first shots of that. And then check out this deal section here because that's, like, insane. You'll click see more, and yeah. That's, like, really, really good. So hopefully that helps somebody out. And, of course, happy Easter to everybody who I am not going to be seeing tomorrow night, but I hope I can see a bunch of you on my local stream which I stream every Saturday night. Patrick Fellers had just left a super chat. Thanks, Patrick. I appreciate it, man. He said, politicians and celebrities have always catered to the respective audiences. Yep. Their fan bases psychologically make them feel like little gods. Yeah. And I guarantee you I'll still be friends with pretty much almost everybody I was before I did this stream. And I think a lot of the people who are big Trump fans will come in and help reinvigorate all the Trumpers to maybe put some public pressure on him. So I think this is a good conversation to have. I'm just not really very good at like, like being like Mr. Popular and being a celebrity or a politician. I guess I'm not good at catering enough. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, well guys, totally failed politician. Cause I've never been one and totally failed celebrity because I've never been one of those either. So, yeah. I am what I am. I'm going to leave you guys with this. For those of you that are still here live, and for those of you who are watching on replay, because I know a lot of people end up watching my streams on replay as a podcast. I've got my favorite state representative in here, and I'm keeping her in a good place right here. Under Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and when we think about some of these tough topics like we are tonight, and we think of everything falling apart, just remember, if you're a Christian and that's where you get your faith from, just remember that Jesus died for your sins 2,024 years ago, and then he rose again. Easter's coming up in just a couple days. And also, I find a lot of wisdom in the fact that to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. This Ecclesiastes chapter 3. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones. Think about which time that is there. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Happy Good Friday. Happy Easter. I will see you guys on Locals tomorrow night and God bless. All right, thanks for watching, and have a good one.